Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the second episode of movie review and a makeup look. So today we're going to be using the Jawbreaker palette and we are going to be talking about the summer of 84. I have my little notes on the movie that I wrote down so I can give you guys some more information about it if you have not seen it. But yeah, that sounds interesting. We're going to get into it. But before we get started, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button. And yeah, let's get started. Um, this is a fun little series for me so far. And I'm it's, it's to the point where I'm like, I don't necessarily even care if anybody watches it. I just enjoy doing it. So I'm going to get, I've got some stuff out. I've got my brushes here, got my concealer, got my Jawbreaker palette. I went back and forth um, whether I was going to use this one or my Tetris palette because I thought that would be fitting. Um, I did a little poll on Instagram and Jawbreaker won. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, if you have not seen Summer of 84, I highly, highly recommend it. Such a good movie. Um, it is on Shutter. I'm looking for my eyeshadow primer. Um, and again, if you have never been on Shutter, Shutter is a, it's like Netflix, but it's only horror. You can do, they have shows, they have some movies. It is $5.99 a month, and when you sign up, you get the first week free, so you get to try it for a week before they charge you, which is awesome. I am not affiliated. I just really enjoy it because I am a horror fanatic. Um, my next review, I will try and pick a movie that is not just on Shutter. Summer of 84 might be on Netflix. I do have Netflix, but I don't remember if that is on there or not. But I will find out and leave that in the comments below. But it is on Shudder. And the last movie I talked about was also on Shudder, so it might be worth just signing up and getting the free week and then canceling it before the week is over and just watch the movies that I've recommended to you. Because even if you rented them from Redbox, you would be spending the same amount for a month of Shudder. So... There's that. So let's move you a little bit and we'll just get started. I did use this Jawbreaker palette once. Uh, I rewatched Summer of 84 because it had been, I knew I wanted to talk about it. I love it. It had been a little while since I'd seen it. So I rewatched it and I was playing with this palette and I was having a little bit of a time. So hopefully this doesn't go south on me. We can pray. And I need my color switch and we'll just get started now summer of 84 obviously takes place in 1984 so it's very aesthetically it's like watching stranger things if you're a fan of strangers things because that takes place in the 80s it's very much i would say stand by me monster squad meets disturbia if anybody's familiar with that movie with shia labeouf where he's like watching his neighbor and thinks his neighbor's a serial killer. It's very much Stand By Me meets Disturbia. Um, there was another movie that came to mind that I can't think of right now. I'm going to try and pick some cleaner brushes because that may help the cause here just a little bit. I need to watch, watch, I need to wash my eyeshadow brushes, so please don't judge me too harshly here. Um... But yes, it takes place, I'm just going to read off of my notes. It was released in 2018, and I did see it right when it came out. Um, I rented it. Such a good movie. Um, it, the main character's name is Davey. He is played, I wrote his name down, by Graham. I can't pronounce his last name. It was a Canadian movie. Bright Lights produced it. It had three different directors. I didn't give very much film information last time, so I thought I would write some key points down, so don't judge me, because I'm old and my memory's not great, so there's that. And then also pray that um, this doesn't go south on me. So yeah, we're going to just be using, If I'm sure everybody and their mother has seen the inside of the Jawbreaker palette, and I'm not going to go through the shades that I'm using. I will try and remember to leave them down below if anybody cares. 
we're just going to do it. But Davy has a paper route. It's typical like suburbia. Like I said, it's very much um, aesthetically like watching Stranger Things. Um, they did a very good job, I feel like, with wardrobe, making you feel like you're watching, you know, the 80s. And so Davy has this paper route and you know a small town he knows everybody there's murders that are happening of and I'd have to go back and watch again like um, kids and I don't know if they're all children I want to say that they are like I just watched this and I already forgot but um there's, you know, the local sheriff's deputy. He starts to suspect who, you know, this guy lives in the neighborhood. He's on his paper out. Starts to suspect that the sheriff um, deputy is the killer. And so it's him and his three friends, you know, and there's the scenes with them in the treehouse, which is why it was very much like you know monster squad or stand by me where they're sitting around and they're talking the cast is really really good um i can't remember what else the deputy has the guy that played the deputy has been in but i had seen him before um he looked familiar they start you know they do the whole you know nancy drew party boys situation where they're they start following him because he's Davy's convinced that he's the killer and they start following him and I am try, gonna try and not so you don't know like there's points that come up where you're like oh he's definitely the killer and then there's other situations that happens and you're like oh no he's not he's wrong so you kind of, you're kind of left wondering till the end if he is, if he isn't, and I'm not going to tell you. That way you can go out and watch it. But it's very good. There's a lot of little twists that come up, and you're like, oh snap, I didn't, I didn't see that coming, um, which was cool. Like I said, it's very the cast in it was very, very good. Um, the boys that they had playing his friends um, and in I loved some of the treehouse scenes because they're you know doing typical boy stuff they're looking at you know the nudie magazines they're you know they're in junior high and so you know they're drinking a little bit and it was just fun um, those scenes were fun to watch with them you kind of feel like you're there and it's one that it's another one like the last movie I reviewed where I watched it one time and was like that is one of the best movies that I have seen in a long time like why am I not hearing more about this movie like it was so good and it was one of those when I watched it the first time I was on the edge of my seat I was like what's gonna happen what's gonna happen like till the very end, it really does a good job of like grabbing you and holding your attention. Um, the pace on it was very good. It wasn't slow. I didn't feel like it was super like drawn out. I don't know. It was just a really, really good movie. It didn't have, I mean, it was straight to video, but it didn't have a low budget feel to it. I feel like they really like put, invested some money in it. Um, like aesthetically wardrobe I'm assuming because it was a Canadian film they filmed it in Canada but it just like the look of it it didn't look low budget you didn't feel like you're you know you don't it wasn't one of those movies where they shot it with a camcorder not that there's anything wrong with those movies but sometimes those movies just get on my nerves because I feel like I can't see anything I don't know what I'm looking at but the quality, like I said on this, you don't feel like you're watching a low budget movie at all. So that was really, it, it was just a, 
all around it was just a good movie if you like and it's not like a straight up slasher movie um it has some gore in it but it's not it's not a lot because most of the movie is spent you know they're following this guy around trying to figure out if he's a serial killer so most of the movie is not gory so if you're not into gore and you like um like psychological thrillers this is definitely a movie um that you would like it's worth checking out I, I watched it one time when I first saw it and was like that was one of the best movies I've seen and it. it's another movie that just I watched it and it really like stayed with me I was like that was good and I think because I've seen so many horror movies um, I've become a little bit jaded and desensitized to them and not a lot shocks me but like I said that had some it had really good twists in it and it was it was just really well done so I did I'm trying to do like an 80s look so I've got some purple and some pink going on I'm going to if anybody cares about the makeup if you're just here for the review then that's fine also because it is a good movie I'm gonna put some concealer on my eyelid there is a female character in it, and again, I've seen her in movies. If you watch it, you see her, you're going to be like, oh yes, I've seen her before. Um, she's a little bit older than the boys. You know, she's the girl that was Davy's babysitter when he was a little bit younger. She, you know, the blonde cheerleader. The boys, you know, are in love with her. Davy has a crush on her. Very um, sweet character in the movie and like I said, it just was cast well they did a good job picking the actors that they chose let's see do I have a slightly clean flat brush maybe my poor brushes are so dirty I will say that this palette is a little bit harder to work with than some of his other palettes. I own um, Blood Sugar and the Alien palette, and I feel like the formula on some of these shadows is slightly, and I got some of that in my eye, is slightly different. I don't know I feel like some of the mattes in here are a little bit trickier to work with and I feel like this shim like this is a light pink shimmer and it. it's called snack if anybody has the palette um having trouble troubles getting it to lay down just a little bit I don't know like I said I played with this when I was rewatching the movie and I did a version of this eye and the on one side and then I did a version of like a sunset eye on the other side and it the sunset eye actually looked worse at the beginning than the other eye and then it kind of came together and then the version of this that I did looked atrocious so I was like I don't know but I want to use this palette I'm gonna do it on camera and it's gonna look awful and then people are gonna think that I don't know how to do eyeshadow which I probably don't I'm one of those people that I used to think I knew how to do eyeshadow until I, st until, I can't even speak, so apparently I don't know how to talk either. Um, I used to think I knew how to do eyeshadow until I started filming looks and it's, I don't know if it's because I know the camera's on and I'm nervous, but some of the eye looks I've done on camera have, have I would say not been great. And starting to think maybe I don't know as much as I did which is fine and then I'm gonna go back in with the purple yeah if anybody is interested in the colors that I used and I can leave that down below for you 
because I feel like if I sit here and tell you what I'm doing while I'm talking about the movie, we'll be here for a million years, and I don't think anybody wants to listen to me talk for a million years. But back to the movie. Um, I do like movies filmed in Canada. They have some really pretty locations up there because I've watched a lot of TV shows and like sci-fi films a lot of um, their stuff up in Canada. There's just like this, the, I'd have to go back and look where they actually filmed it, but the town they filmed it in was so pretty, like picturesque, suburbia, like just really neat looking. Uh, just a normal, and it's, you know, it was a normal small town, you know, the, the place everybody wants to live kind of a thing. Um, that is not the color that I wanted to use. But this look looks better than the look that I was originally doing. And I'm glad I experimented with this palette instead of just going in and doing it on camera like I did with my last makeup look because it would have it would have looked atrocious because it looked atrocious when I was done it was bad I kind of stuck with the pastels in this palette because I had an alarm clock growing up that had like the tape player and it was like this pink and purple and the turquoise and I don't know I got very like nostalgic vibes looking at um that color combination so that is why I went with those colors it's gonna drag that like sea foamy and then I put a little bit of blue we're just gonna drag that underneath so that is our finished eye look it definitely looks better than the first one that I did so that is a bonus I don't think I'm gonna put mascara on so we'll just leave it at that but yeah summer of 84 definitely definitely an awesome movie if you like slightly scary movies but you don't like like slasher movies definitely worth checking out I highly recommend it I will check and see if it is on Netflix like I said um, if you're gonna rent it and you're gonna rent the other movie that I recommended sign up for Shutter for a month like I said it's only $5.99 which is super cheap and they have an awesome selection thank you guys so so much for tuning in to another episode hopefully this wasn't too boring. I tried to keep it condensed because I didn't want to give away the ending of the movie, give away too many spoilers because it definitely would ruin it. And I really want you guys to go and watch it because it was an awesome movie. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you can watch the next episode. And I will see you all in my next video. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Bye, guys.